everybody. Scott for Angry Badger Minis. Happy Easter. Um, sorry we haven't uh, posted in the last day, maybe two. Um, catching up on some family things. And hopefully uh, we'll see how long this stream goes because the little man is sleeping, taking a nap, and dad is home babysitting. So I'll be in a way limited on what I can do as far as when, his, when he wakes up. But... Just to let you know, I have not actually stopped on what I've been working on. Uh, we are working on the Death Watch, and as you can see, we're moving right along with quite a bit. Um, we essentially have uh, quite a few squads, more than I, I realized that I had, uh, which is interesting. Um, and there are some things that I would rather do to make my life easier with fielding this army. Uh, meaning such as even though the book the codex allows you f to um, say field a bike with and a terminator with a squad because you know the death death watch are that unique I think it would be much easier for me to just go ahead and build one more bike to put with these guys and you know um, and go that way now I don't have another bike death watch fairing the top but I don't really think that's necessary because I can make a, uh, a black shield and that's my plan um, I've actually been kind of working through that and looking at the history and lore of the black shields you know and while there's not a whole lot out there uh, you know there, there's plenty there's enough to make it lore friendly I'll put it that way um, at least as far as I'm concerned and you know, that's really all that matters in the end, right? It's a little cool and all that. But as you can see here, what we've got, or what we've put together so far, is um, behind me, what I'm doing here. We have, this is, the, these guys right here, and these guys over here are all from the Overkill box set. And I have two, or had, have two of those sets. So, and I bought them not for the Death Watch so much as I did the Gene Stealer Colt models. Um, on top of that, I had already started, you know, a Death Watch squad kill team, if you will, a long time ago. That's these guys right here that I'm messing with as I'm talking. Um, mainly for my Space Hulk board game. Um, we also have, you know, uh, a Terminator captain watch captain we have a regular watch captain which he's going to end up being a black shield and yes black shields can rise through the ranks so in my mind uh, what I'm trying to do here honestly is I'm trying to get away from unfortunately all of these death watch over here it's almost like the majority of them are ultramarines and I've got nothing against the ultramarines I just uh, I just don't don't like it you know I don't like the, all the Omega symbols and all that crap um, that being said um, I also have a uh, you know Terminator and librarian armor um, as well we've got um, brother Artemis which I took his head off and put a helmet on because again I don't like helmetless guys or helmetless helmetless Marines We've got a regular librarian that was going to be part of this squad, and we have another Terminator in librarian armor that actually has a Terminator helmet on that I made a long time ago. Um, let me see if I can get this in the camera, sorry. As you can see, and mainly by, you know, this is a fine cast model except for the head, um, and I've primed it, of course. But basically, I drilled out the head, and then I put that helmet in there. And uh, it's not too bad looking at all. I mean, you, you know, first glance, you don't even realize it. And so, again, you know, in my mind, I, I mean, even, you know, in Death Comp uh, Deathwing, the game, your librarian's wearing, you know, his respirator, if you will. But still, I mean, let's think about this. You know, if there was some type of um, catastrophic uh, vacuum implosion, I mean, how does that stop his eyes from getting sucked out of his head or whatever, you know what I mean? How does that stop him from being able to go into the vacuum of space and whatnot? So um, it doesn't seem, you know, necessarily the way it should be. Now these other, you know, Terminators over here, until I get 
more heads or come across any of my bits box boxes rather they will remain without the terminator helmet but i also don't need them for my space hulk um, we do have the death watch watch master uh, i think is what he's called and i went ahead and took his you know removed his head as well and i put the new helmet on that i think is really cool that i've never seen before um, it's you know it's uh it's kind of like a night helm but it's also got you know the spartan kind of you know look on the top however it's not you know uh, feathers or hair or, or you know it, it's it's solid you know which i think is pretty cool so um, essentially that's that's what we've got going on with these guys um, I'm really looking at and I may go ahead and do this um, I'm looking at the possibility we also have uh, what's left besides you know these uh, was this 5 10 15 20 20 you know 25 uh, we'll call them tactical Marines but I guess they're called veterans um, besides these guys, what I have left is two squads of Terminators, which I found very interesting that the Death Watch, a Terminator squad can, can have three, uh, three of them can, you know, for a five man squad can take as many, you know, three heavy weapons. Um, and that's interesting to me because I have a lot of, um, extra assault cannons and I love assault cannons. So I think that's what's going to end up happening with these guys. So I think suffice it to say, it would be safe to say, I am falling in love with this army. Now, they're not going to be as, you know, they're not going to be competitive. I don't have a, any vehicles for them. I mean, I can obviously use drop pods and things like that. Um, I don't have any vehicles slated for them right now, nor is it really my concern. This army was never meant to be huge. Um, but I do have two venerable dreadnoughts for them, uh, and I, like I said, I have two five-man Terminator squads, uh, and then they don't, in a way. Uh, I mean, between the Terminators teleporting around and or teleporting, you know, I've got you know two five-man squads of uh, you know Vanguard veterans or you know assault you know assault uh, Marines. Uh, even though they're a little more than that um, I even included one black shield in there to the point that I needed one extra guy and you know to, to flesh it out uh, for another five-man squad and so the only markings on this guy are the Inquisition marking on his knee pad his death watch you know arm itself and then nothing else like the other guys like his jump pack and everything it's all slick you know so he's a black shield so everything you know it's gonna be great um, let's see here so we got we have black shields you know intermittent in within this army uh, I believe this entire squad right here is going to be um, nothing but black shields yes my little man is still keeping me awake <laughs> um, but I mean, again, they can always, you know, intertwine or whatever. One great thing about the Death Watch box set, if you buy one, is, uh, let me grab it real quick. If you buy the Death Watch kill team, uh, and I don't, I don't know if you have the capacity to do this. I do, I just don't have it at the moment. I've done it in the past, and I'm going to show you that as well. Give me Probably will not come out very well in the camera, but I wanted to show you what what your abilities are. And this is not illegal. You're doing this for yourself. You know, you're not reselling this or anything like that. Um, but if you have the ability, you can make a mold like I did here of this salamander's you know shoulder pad. It's a three-dimensional shoulder pad. Now I'm going to be buying you know more. 
Um, and these were uh, the Forge World ones. And the reason that I'm making so many of those, or will be, is because of all of the the war, um, you know the Warhammer 30k models that I have that I'll be putting together because they will all be salamanders. Now they may be you know mixed in with the 40k stuff you know here and there. We'll see how that works out. But um, the point is you can make you know you can make it. Um, you know again that's not the greatest picture, but that's made out of basically gypsum and it's it's almost. I mean, it's pretty cheap to make. So, anyway, that being said, inside this box set, and I mean, there's nothing in this one right now, but the Death Watch Kill Team box set, you get, um, where is it? Hold on, I separated one. Here we go. You get, I, I had bought, you know, a bunch of the, the chapter upgrade things, you know, to make sure. And that's the other thing, is I may be having to add more Marines to this because I have a ton of these Death Watch shields. But I've also thought about adding some of them uh, to my other armies as if, you know, they came back, you know, to their chapters. Um, and as you know, Death Watch veterans are sworn to secrecy. But that being said, you get 17 of these various, um, 17 of these various shoulder pads here. Now, all of the shoulder pads would work on any of your Marines um provided it was on their right arm the there's a few that will not transfer over unless you just, just don't care um to the left shoulder if you wanted to use it for normal marines such as like the salamanders the, the salamanders pointing the wrong way um the uh you know the white or black consoles their their eagles pointing the wrong way um the let's see here the Space Wolves Wolf is pointing the wrong way, and potentially the, I'm not even sure what this is, now you could get away with that one. Um, maybe the Howling Griffins, I'm not sure. But either way, there's, a, there's very few here that wouldn't translate, you know, into either or. So, um, you know, it's just something you're going to have to look at, you know, for yourself. But, um... The great thing about it is, I mean, you get a ton of these things, you know, and I mean, 17 in one box. And I mean, you know, as you can see, I've got five boxes here. Um, not to mention, I don't even know what's inside the Death Watch Terminator one. It, they may even have some stuff in there. Uh, I just haven't opened a box yet. And then you've got all these extra, you know, upgrade things, shields and things like that. You know, all kinds of stuff that, you know, if I had a Land Raider, you know, allocated for these guys... Um, to be honest with you, between the shields and the Inquisition marks on the uh, in the upgrades and stuff, I would easily put those all over that Land Raider, and it would look amazing. Um, let's see here. There, they they have like combi heavy weapons, like this heavy bolter slash heavy flamer. I'm not too sure about how all that works. But I, you know, it's going to take me a little bit to, to get into this and make sure I understand it so that I make sure I outfit my people the way I'd like to because obviously they're going to give you, you know, weapons choices and they're going to give you weapons that they think they want you to take like, you know, the shotgun or the frag launcher and stuff like that. I don't really have any use for those. It's not the way I play and, you know, maybe if I was going to, you know, have a slated five man or whatever kill team for the game of kill team, that would be different. But right now, it's just not the way it's going. Um, especially a lot of these close combat weapons and stuff just don't really do it for me. Um, I mean, I was hard pressed even with the fact that, you know, these two guys right here, I mean, I have two of them obviously from the Overkill watch uh, box set, uh, these Blood Angels right here. They, um, you know, they've got chain swords, you know, and a flame, a flamer pistol. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, kind of cuts down doing but my tactics for using these are not necessarily and I mean not always because some of you if I end up playing against you I want to tell you all my tactics uh, no I'm kidding I'll tell you I don't care um, assault troops which I don't use a lot of believe it or not or haven't over the years except in the salamanders army they're a great distraction and they're not in my personal opinion they are not something that anyone can 
easily um, just ignore. I mean, they may think they can, but it, you know, in the terms of um, capturing objectives or, um, you know, even just, you know, outright harassment, you know, and, uh, you know, you know, picking off troops here and there, or whittling down those that might be on an objective, you know, they are a problem. And their speed is ever, you know, is great. Um, so it's just, you know, it's really about how you're going to choose to play them. You know, uh, obviously the game, you know, for those of you that aren't aren't sure about why the game is the way it is, I'll be honest with you, it took me a long time to wrap my head around it because when I was brought into 40K, everything that I was brought up into was about annihilating, you know, basically annihilation meaning we didn't have any limits on turns. There was no six turn limit. We just continued to fight until you wiped out the other guy's army, no matter how many turns it was. And it was great and fun. Um, I think that it gave a lot more flexibility to your army. I think it, it allowed your, your generalship to come out. I think uh, it gave you chances to make up for specific mistakes. And what I have, what I, my opinion anyway of what I've learned of 40K and the way that it's evolved, along with how essentially as a marketing deal, you know, in match plays specifically, you have to, you know, in some cases you've got to buy certain things if you're going to be competitive. And of course, that's the company strategy how you buy and spend more money or buy the more expensive toys, if you will. Um, you know to go to war with but at the same time uh, I think um, I honestly think that um, you uh, if you're if you're stuck in that there's really no way around that's why there's six turns that's why it's you know the objectives are set the way they are are they play tested thoroughly I don't think anybody would ever agree that they are um, of course you could always argue one way or the other and some people will say it's fair and you know and at the height of my 40k career if you want to call it that i mean yeah i was you know as far as the rules are concerned and everything like that i mean i knew what page it was on i knew what paragraph it was i mean i had everything memorized it was crazy but you know i'm not that guy anymore and i'm, I'm not running a club anymore so I, you know it's not necessary for me um and i have moved on to where i just want to play more you know narrative and just have fun with it you know regardless of you know whether i win or lose um doesn't mean i'm not going to try to win of course but um i'd like to see some other things pan out but i do believe just like i've mentioned before about the um what you call it about the uh well my little man just woke up that means it's almost time for lunch so anyway real quick what, it, what it's all what I'm saying that I believe it's all about is trying to keep the game fast keep people interested and um, you know of course you play the way that you want to well thank you guys for tuning in for the short time that we did and I'll catch up with you later just wanted to give you a, a brief uh, you know brief idea of, of uh, what was still going on as far as our progress we have not stopped we're still pushing forward just didn't have time to make a video so take care and we'll see you next time